Casper. Sexual violence occurs in person, online, and via technology such as social media or other forms of communication. Check out this month's article, No Means No by Tiff Majit. Visit our website and or Office of Christian Care and Counseling webpage for helpful links and more information on sexual assault. For additional assistance or information, email pastoralcounseling at alfredstreet.org. This what they've been waiting for? You ready? here on the corner of South Alfred Street and Duke. We are so happy to be with you again. My name is Tiffany Diggs. And my name is Mel Crothy. And the only way that I could do this is with my bestie. So we thank God for favoring you, us bestie. this morning thank that we you. get to do this again. We came again. out of retirement. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. amen, amen, amen. Because, you know, we like to consider ourselves the dynamic duo. Dynamic in these, duo. In these Alfred Streets, like... Yeah, well... We try to name another dynamic duo, like Tom and Jerry. Okay. Lucy and Ethel. Uh, Gina and Pam. Okay, Gina and Pam. You know what? There, there's one more dynamic duo I can think there of. There is. Okay, let's do a drum roll. You ready? All right. Uh, go ahead and name it. Batman and Robin. No. 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 Uh, sorry. Uh, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson. No, not Batman. What? No. What? What? I'm Sherlock. You're Dr. Watson? No. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No. Sorry. Excuse us. Our, our it's not about us at this point. It's about you all. What are the other dynamic duos that are joining us for worship? Put your name in your city in the chat. Let us know. We want to know who's joining us for worship. Yes, we do. And you know, sometimes I like to be in the know. Who are you watching with? And Amen. if it's your first time, tell us in the chat. We want to shout you out. We want to say good morning, and we want to say thank you for joining us this morning on The Prelude. Amen. And while you're at it, let us know if this is your first time joining us in the digital and virtual space for worship at the Alpha Street Baptist Church. Yes. So, so we are excited not only about the worship that's happening here in Alexandria, but we are coming to a city near you. We, Want to tell us about we it? Are, we yes. are. You guys, we are going to be in the city of brotherly love next month, the city of Philadelphia. So I'm going to ask my friend. Elliot, who is in the booth, to go ahead and cue that trailer because we want you guys to be just as excited as we are about going to Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> this is what they've been waiting for? You ready? Get ready, get ready. Listen, I, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm going. And I think that's a common question that we're going to get here from the parishioners here in the yeah. DMV. Can we go to Philly for this worship service? 
I'm gonna tell y'all something, but don't tell anybody else. Mel and Tiffany are going to Philadelphia, so if y'all in the DMV and y'all wanna come with us, we won't tell nobody. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I'm excited about Philly. What does it boast? You know what? Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, it has some good cheese steaks. It got that good water ice. What's water ice? Wait, did you just and ask I, me? I think you said it wrong. It's steak and cheese. Okay, excuse us. I tell you all the time, don't embarrass me in these Alfred streets. It's cheese steak, and I promise you, our Philadelphia brothers and sisters, by the time we get to Philadelphia, my friend Mel will know all about water ice and she will pronounce it correctly. It's cheese steaks. Okay. okay. All right. All right. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you all this time. Philly, are you watching us right now? Let us know in the chat so we can shout you out. Can't wait to meet you at least first in the virtual space. Because, you know, this is my favorite part of the show because like my bestie said i have never met a stranger so let's meet some of my friends in the group chat so yeah. here we are we have jam john from richmond virginia richmond welcome to worship uh we have sheila frazier from delaware good morning good morning sister sheila welcome to worship we have yvonne from brooklyn bk is in the house Amen. Welcome to worship. We have Reverend Lisa Bailey Harper worshiping with us from Bedside Baptist. Welcome to worship. We love you. We also have, let me see here, Gloria Frederick. She said, I live in Northern California, and she want to give a shout out this morning. We're happy you're here from the uh, Sunshine State. Philly is online. Sister Marla hey. Hamilton, welcome to worship. We're excited to have you. And you're going to have to tell my bestie where's the best place to get some water ice when we get there. Thank you. <laughs> Is this Northern California, Gloria Frederick? Welcome to worship. Glad to have you with us at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. Mark D uh, Dixon from the state that I currently reside, Virginia, is in the house. You guys, please keep those shout outs coming because we want to shout you out. We want to say hi and acknowledge our faithful online um, viewers. So just today is a special day for our 11 o'clock service mail. Go around, baby. It is. So it is Scout Sunday, and we are so excited to be joined for our member interviews as part of uh, the Prelude. Yes, yes, we are, because we love Scouts, and more importantly, we love our youth here at Alfred um, Street Baptist Church. All right, so we're going to go ahead and introduce you guys at home to some of these. Look how handsome these young men look in their, their scouting uniforms. I love. Okay, what's your name? My name is Gabriel. I am in the ninth grade, and I am star in scouting. Oh, oh, he has the rank of star. Shout out to a troop number. 133. 133 is in the house. Okay, let us know your name. Um, I am Jalen, and I am in eighth grade. Um, I'm second class. Amen. And how long have you been in scouts? Um, like three years. Excellent. Three years in Scouts. All right, Gabriel. Welcome to the Prelude. Can you tell us what has been your most memorable experience as a Scout so far? Um, the Burke Lake camp out with Jalen. We kind of got to hang out and stay up to about 12, uh, which <laughs> resulted in most of us just running around at night. That was fun. Um, and overall, just the bonding experiences I get to have along the way. That is good. We love those bonding experiences. Love that. And Jalen, what is one of your most memorable experiences of scouting? Um, I'd say for me, it'd also be the Burke Lake camp out. You know, it was really fun. A lot of stuff to do. Um, we played kickball, had uh, barbecue, and yeah. That sounds, that sounds great. So you know what? We thank you, Gabriel. We thank you, Jalen. But you know what? It would not be Scout Sunday if we also didn't rep the Girl Scouts. Girl so we got Scouts some Girl in Scouts. The house. Okay, thank, thank you, you for joining us. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hi, good morning. All right, good what is your name? Hi, I'm Deja Stewart Simmons. And age, and what is your ranking, Girl Scout? I'm 18, and I'm a Girl Scout ambassador. Hey, man. And she is. Okay, I'm going to ask you your name, your age, and your rank in um, Scout. Um, my name is Ava Bishop. I'm 12 years old, and I'm a cadet. Hey, man. All right, so Deja, Deja, how long have you been a Girl Scout? I've been a Girl Scout for 11 years. Wow. She's dedicated, and she's commitment, people. Okay, let's, let's hear about um, Asia. Um, I've been a Girl Scout since first grade. 
awesome. All right, so what has been your most memorable experience being a Girl Scout at Alfred Street Baptist Church? This summer, I got the opportunity to be a congressional intern through Girl Scouts. Wow. So. Let me tell y'all something. They That's are doing major. big things at Alfred Street Baptist Church. That's major. What is one of your most memorable experiences? Um, I would say just camping with older girls for the first time and like with the uh, seniors. That was really fun for me. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you guys. We are so super thank excited to celebrate us. Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts today. I know you guys got to do some stuff to get ready, so we will let you guys go. Thank you. Thank you for so joining much. us on the prelude. Thank you. You know, that brings back memories. Yes. I was a Girl Scout. I made it all the way to Brownie. Wait, you stopped at Brownie? Judge yourself. Okay. I, I won't judge myself because I actually went all the way through in high school. And you know what, Mel? Yeah. Uh, when I was a senior, I auditioned to be an MC at the Girl Scout National Convention. How'd it go? <laughs> Y'all go. And did. And did. And did. Well, my memorable experience was selling cookies, thin mints. Okay, yeah. well, that is so wonderful. We're so happy that she was able to sell those um, <clears throat> thin mint cookies. No competition. And I'm, I'm not judging you. No judgment. Sherlock. Dr. Watson. Amen uh, so and amen. Who is still here in the group chat? Let's see, Mel. All right. G Germany is in the house. Okay, Germany. Welcome to worship. Uh, we have, let's see here. We got Lewis Briggs from Waldorf, Maryland. Southern Maryland is in the house. Southern Maryland, welcome to worship. All right. We have uh, Raga Benny from Los Angeles, California. Welcome to worship. Looks like Greensboro, North Carolina, home of the Aggies, Aggie Pride. Welcome to worship. Okay, Morgan State Bears. Uh, <laughs> all right, who else do we have here? We have Dorothy from Pennsylvania this morning uh, joining us in the chat. H-Town is in the house. Amen, amen. Listen, I absolutely love it when you guys are telling us where you guys are from. Um, Reverend Kyle Stevenson, looks like you're on your way home. Safe travels. We yes. love you and welcome to worship. All right, so yesterday, um, we're going to go ahead and get started because the choir is coming in. Pastor Wesley is back in the pulpit. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week on welcome the... Welcome to worship on the prelude. On the prelude. Take care. Bye. to the Lord. Good morning, Alpha Street. Good morning. How many of you are glad to be in the service one more time? God is good, isn't he? We saw his miraculousness this week on Monday, but we're here today. We're so glad. To, we're so glad to be here in Jesus' name. Let's all put our hands together. Trinity is here. And we're thanking God one more time. Oh, so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. Oh.
thank God. We thank God because he's a holy land. We're just going to slow it down just a little, but we're just going to, we want you to continue in worship with us. We're worshiping the holy land. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Good morning, my church family. Good morning. Welcome to Scout Sunday. When cheating is easy, I will be trustworthy. When bullying presents itself, I will be loyal. When a hand can be offered, I will be hopeful. In the face of frustrating tasks, I will be cheerful. As God is present, I will be reverent. 
God calls us together to worship this morning. So let us heed God's call and rejoice. Good morning, Alpha Street. Good morning. <laughs> Today, oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. Today, I'll be reading from you, reading for you from Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 through 13. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God and will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will be surely ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Good morning. Family, there are those among us who are going through the valley of the shadow of death. We lift up Alan Ingram in the passing of his uncle, Samuel Thomas Simpson. We also lift up Stephanie Sweet in the passing of her sister, Karen. Who else are we praying for? Let us pray. Lord God, our God Almighty, the great I am, as we stand in awe of your presence, your goodness, and your mighty works in our lives, let us be reminded of Romans 8, 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, we know that your love is eternal, ever-present, unconditional, and unchanging. Let us draw comfort, power, and confidence that your love and spirit is living in us, and we are never alone. Let us be reminded today to spread your love to our brothers and sisters as your hands and feet on this earth, so that they may look at us and see you. Furthermore, thank you for your joy and peace which surpasses all understanding. May that same joy and peace be created, amplified, and spread around the world when Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Eagle Scouts come together in your name to foster service, progress, camaraderie, and entrepreneurship. We hope the work we do is a testament to your glory and majesty and to the power of spreading your mighty love, peace, and joy throughout the world. Today, let our hearts and minds be lifted to you so that we can receive your teachings and apply them to our specific lives and needs. Let us remember that we are more than conquerors and that if you are for us, who can be against us? With this renewed confidence, let us go about our week secure in who we are in Christ Jesus. In closing, in the words of Kirk Franklin, all praise to you, the one who can make our next chapter our best chapter. Hallelujah, amen. Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning. Please join us this morning for our hymn of rejoicing. Jesus is all the world to me.
Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning. My name is Kendall. And my name is Preston. And, and we, we are, are representing, representing the PAC 133 Cub Scouts. According to Paul Ryan, passing the peace is simple, but the meaning is profound. When we extend our hand to another, we identify with Jesus, who extended his life to the point of death to make peace with humanity. What's more, we symbolize our unity through handshakes and hugs. Likewise, when we regularly pass the peace, we practice God's call to make every effort to maintain the bond of peace. Let us now pass the peace. Amen. Good morning, Alfred Street. To the guests who grace us with the presence of God by your presence and worship, to our family and friends and worshiping community who's with us not only in our overflow, but also across the world wide web. Grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as mother and father, and Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. I pray it goes without saying that you know this is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And what a joy and privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. If you're glad that you're in the Lord's church today, would you just let the Lord know as we thank God for the privilege to worship. We thank the Lord for gathering us in this sacred space where we come to remember and to reflect on all that God has done for us and all that we do in response. When yesterday we celebrated such a tremendous moment moment in the life of this church. I want you to help me give thanks to God that 31 new believers were baptized on yesterday on their confession of faith. And as if getting in Alpha Street wasn't difficult enough, we extended the right hand of fellowship to 142 new members of our church family. To God be the glory. Somebody say third service. Mama say, Mama saw, Mama kusai. Um, yesterday, as we broke bread, I shared with our family that every now and then we need something to trigger our memories. We get so busy in life that there are certain things that just remind us to remember. Photos that we look at, significant places where we go. 
The breaking bread and sharing of cup Jesus instituted as a way of triggering our remembrance of his death and his resurrection and his return. Here at Alpha Street, we share an open communion with anyone who accepts and believes in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you came in today prayerfully, you received the elements for the Lord's Supper. If you did not, you simply wave a hand. We have deacons who are prepared to serve those who need. If you're watching online, we want to encourage you to take this moment to lay hold of bread and cup that you will use to remember and to symbolize the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A little while ago, I bought some what I thought were fancy towels for the house. I, I usually just get towels from Target, but I thought I'd get some Egyptian high thread count pure white towels, and Sister Karen, they started off pretty well. But every time we use them, we wash them because they get dirty. And I've noticed that now I've washed them so much, they, they just don't get clean anymore. They've been washed so much, Deacon Kim, they, they don't smell fresh anymore. That something can be washed so much that eventually it doesn't get clean anymore. So thankful that that's not the way grace operates with us. Because the truth be told, you and I need to be washed a whole lot. Every day. And that's why we take of the cup and drink of the blood and break the bread of Jesus Christ. To remind us that we are washed and the good news is that grace somehow or another makes us cleaner on the other side than we were when we began. I'm thankful for God's mercy, thankful for God's grace, thankful for the love of God which was made manifest on the cross of Calvary. That's why we eat of bread and drink of cup. The bread that we lay hold of reminds us of the broken body of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He was crucified and he died. He was buried, and on the third day, he resurrected from the dead. He showed himself alive to his followers. He has ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of God, making intercessions for our sins. And one day, to the glory of God, he is returning. This we believe as we break bread together. And this cup is a memorial, the blood shed on the cross of Calvary to wash and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. For what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us drink. Will you pray with me? God, we receive through our faith what you offer in your amazing grace, the complete forgiveness of our sins, the eternal security of our soul's salvation, the precious indwelling of the Holy Spirit to guide us into a life that is pleasing in your sight, and the opportunity and obligation we have to share your transformative love with others as we make more disciples. Thank you for forgiving us, Lord. May we now seek to forgive one another. And in the same manner you have loved us, teach us to love one another. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Christ, the redeemed of the Lord, said amen. Alpha Street, today we are blessed as we are in worship to be led. It is our Scout Sunday. We recognize our Scouts at all levels. I'm going to ask all of our Scouts and our volunteers to stand. And would you help me recognize these phenomenal young men and women? As we welcome them and they lead us in worship on today, I am proud. I'm going to ask him to come up here. He's going to be embarrassed. But you, how, how many of y'all were scouts and, and quit? Hey, come, come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. Uh, hey, amen. M Mama and daddy put you in it. Um, the highest level for a Boy Scout is an Eagle Scout. And you all know that fewer than 6% of scouts make Eagle Scout. Even fewer have a suntan like us. Beloved, I am proud to present to you 
the newest Eagle Scout, Brother Evan Kenzo from Alfred Street Baptist Church. Evan, won't you come? Good morning, Alfred Street. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank Pastor Wesley for calling me up here on the spot. <laughs> uh, but the journey to Eagle Scout has been a phenomenal one. Um, it's given me a lot of lessons, um, ones you know, that I would not have learned had I not been in Boy Scouts. And I thank my mom, um, God and my mom, for bringing me here. Um, can you give a round of applause for my mom, please? Thank you. Thank you. Mom, stand up. <laughs> Beautiful lady, isn't she? <laughs> but I thank all of you for you know applauding me and believing in me and supporting me, and you know to God be the glory. And I look forward to your service. <laughs> What a joy it is to recognize that level of honor and achievement. Um, we continue to produce Eagle Scouts around here, and I'm grateful for the Lord for all of our volunteers as well. We have parents and volunteers. I'm going to ask for a moment. We, they did stand, but I want you to know the men and women who volunteer and dedicate themselves to pour into our Scouts. Will all of our Scout leaders stand? And Alpha Street, help me thank God for these men and women for what they do. Thank you. Thank you all for the time in which you serve and which you volunteer. Listen, we are grateful for the Lord's presence among us today with the guests who gather with us. I want to recognize some very special ones. We've got the William Edwards Academic College Tour. There are some high school students from Connecticut who've journeyed down and they're in worship with us today. They're sitting right over here. I'm going to ask that they would stand. Would you help me recognize these young men and women who are with us on today during their college tour? You won't see them because they're downstairs in overflow, but we've got a group from Bible College all the way in Norway. Yeah, yeah no, that Norway, Nor Norway, amen. They're in Alpha Street, they're in the overflow. I'm gonna ask that they would stand downstairs. You will probably hear some claps, but we've got a huge contingency of students from Bible College here with us today. Let's welcome them into our worship service on today. Welcome to you all. No, I'm talking to the camera because they can, they, they can see us. Uh, there may be some other guests who are with us. We take seriously the word of God that whenever there's a new face in your presence, there's an angel around you. If you're a guest of our church and you don't mind us recognizing you, would you just wave your hand in the air that we can thank God for you? Any guests with us today? Alpha Street, help me thank God for all of our guests. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jesus declared in John 10, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We celebrate abundant life, especially in our birthdays. If there's anybody today celebrating a recent birthday, would you please stand and allow us to celebrate with you? Will all of our birthdays stand? Alpha Street, help me thank God for these. We're celebrating another year of life. And then finally, we also want to recognize our anniversaries. There may be a couple with us today that's put another candle on the cake at another year of better than worse. If you're here today, you're celebrating an anniversary. Would you please stand that we may celebrate with you any anniversaries in Alpha Street today? Amen. Here we go. Okay. Remain standing. We like to call out the years so that we can celebrate. I'm gonna start all the way up in the balcony, if you would. Holler it out loud and proud. How many years are you celebrating? 10, congratulations on your 10th anniversary. <laughs> Starting here on my right, we'll move over to my left. How many years are you all celebrating? 51. <laughs> hey. Did you say 51? Y'all been married as long as I've been alive. 
I got a feeling you're going to make it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> congratulations, congratulations. Right here, how many years you all celebrating? Nine, congratulations on your ninth anniversary. And then finally, my brother, how many good years you're celebrating today? 64. Amen. <laughs> the 51 thought they did something. Amen. <laughs> oh, praise be to God. Listen, family, I want to move us on in worship, but I also want to pause for a moment of prayer. There are two things I want you to join with me in prayer for. One, of course, if you're tuned in and plugged in, you know of the rising tensions and brewing war in the Middle East. We've been aware of the conflict with Israel, Israel and Palestine and now with Iran involved. You want to pray for peace in that area, especially for those families, those children, and our deployed servicemen and women, um, that God would keep and cover them. And today, I also want to pray over our scouting troop. I'm going to ask them to come forth in a moment. They are headed to the 60th Annual West Point Scout Camporee at the United States Military Academy at West Point. And you can only get in by lottery. And this is the third time our troop will be headed there. And we want to lift them up in prayer this morning as they make their journey. So I'm going to ask all those scouts who are on their way if you would come to the altar. We want to pray over them and at the same time, we will pray as a family for peace um, in the Middle Eastern conflict that we are aware of. <laughs> family, if you so, feel so inclined, would you just extend your right hand towards the altar and join in with me? God, we come to you because we know that you are a coverer and a keeper. In the midst of war and tensions and conflicts, you're able to shield and protect the righteous. God, the complexity of what's happening in the Middle East may escape our understanding, but not your care. We pray even now, O oh God, that peace would reign, that you would lift up sisters and brothers who model, who model the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you'd keep safe those who serve and seek to protect the liberties, freedoms, and life of all that you've created. Today in prayer, Lord, we ask that you keep and cover these young men as they prepare themselves for a wonderful experience that is before them. God, we pray that they would come back wiser, stronger. Lord, that they would be, continue to be lifted up as models of ethic and integrity and in Christian living. God, that we would be proud of them as we've prayed over them. Now, God, the world needs to be reminded that you are sovereign. Not presidents, not kings, not queens, not military might, but the God over all the earth. God, show yourself strong is our prayer. So we lift this up to you in the name of the one who conquered all things. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. The redeemed of the Lord said amen. 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 Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Family, you all know that we're entering the summer season and summer is all about our youth and our children. I want to remind you that this Friday, the 19th of April from 7 p.m. to 9.30, our higher ground youth, our high school students will be in fellowship together at Bolero in Arlington. And we're asking parents, if you've got a high school child, we encourage you to let them be in fellowship. One of the great things you can do as a parent is to make certain that your children are attached to other children who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we invite you to fellowship with us on this upcoming Friday. And then parents, if you will, mark your calendars. July 3rd through the 7th is our annual junior youth trip. You know one of the great joys of this church family is to gather together our junior youth and to take them on a vacation time in the summer. Usually it's to Disney World, not this year, 
This year, they're going to Atlanta, Selma, and Montgomery to walk in the civil rights footsteps and to know the history of their people. Because here it is. If they won't teach it in school, they're going to learn it at church. And we want to make certain we raise a generation who knows the history of what God has done in our people. And so if you would, mark your calendars July 3rd through 7th. Not only will we send them there, but we'll be praying over them as they get ready to make that journey. That being said, if you're new to Alpha Street, this may surprise you. We do not raise a formal offering during our worship time. It's not because we don't believe in giving. It's because we don't need an offering plate to remind us how good God has been. Each and every one of us knows that we have not escaped grace. Every now and then you ought to pause and remind yourself how good God has truly been to you. I said that at 8 o'clock, I want to remind you now, every paycheck you get has God's fingerprints on it. That God is the source. And because we trust in the Lord, we give freely. God's, the Word of God says God loves a cheerful, a happy, a, a hilarious giver. Someone who realizes that I do this because God's been good to me, and I know that God will not allow me to struggle when I'm faithful in my finances. And so you know all the online and technological platforms that are available to you. We would ask that you would just be prayerful, that you'd listen to the Holy Spirit, that you would give whatever the Lord places on your heart, and to God be the glory for what we will give. I'm going to ask God's blessings over our giving, both for those in this space and online. We have a small video that we want you to watch about our scouts, and then you're going to be best tremendously in song by Trinity. Let's bow in prayer. Lord, we thank you for all that you've entrusted to us. Remind me, O oh Lord, that every good and perfect gift comes from you and that we're held accountable for how we do what we do with what we have. Lord, it's amazing that we find money for the things we want to do. I ask now that you remind us of what we've been called to do, that we've spent and wasted money on things that did not bring half as much joy and change to the world as our tithe and our offering. As we sow it into your kingdom, may it be used in a way that touches others with your transformative love. Bless our gift and our giving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My name is Evan Kinsel. I'm 16 years old. I'm a part of Troop 133, and I'm an Eagle Scout. My name is Deja Stewart Simmons. I'm a high school senior. I'm a part of Troop 5223, and I'm a Girl Scout ambassador. My name is Noah Blackson. I'm 17 years old. I'm in Troop 133, and I am first class. Initially, I was just going for uh, fellowship because it was COVID. So kind of fellowship, brotherhood, and just stepping into something new. and. Uh, over time, I realized that the, you know this, this was the pinnacle, and that's what I wanted to do. That's what I made my goal. Well, I first became interested in being a Girl Scout when I was around seven or eight. That's when I was a brownie, and you know I saw like a lot of other Girl Scouts in the church, and I really wanted to be a part of that. It really interested me, so that's what. Uh, it's just like that's really the whole point of Boy Scouts. That's why I'm staying in. It's really it's like the last level. That's the really the final boss. So hitting Eagle Scout is like the biggest thing you could do on Boy Scout. So my service project for the Eagle Scout project was I created uh, 1,000 cold weather survival kits for the homeless and in need. And in it was um, hygiene products as well as cold weather products like um, an emergency blanket, um, a toothbrush, toothpaste, hats, gloves, um, <clears throat> socks, um, hand warmers that last like 11 hours. Um, you know, floss, um, towelettes, tiny towelettes that when you wet them, they expand. Um, as well as uh, food that was um, in partnership with the missions ministry of the church. So I earned the silver award my, when I was a cadet in Girl Scouts and to, or, to earn that I, um, I led a fundraiser where we raised money for homeless families and we bought them gift cards so they could buy winter coats and it was really fun and I did that with a partner. So I'm thinking about going to the skate park and cleaning up all the rocks and all the sticks and branches because those could be really dangerous for skaters. Like, from, I know from personal experience, the amount of times I've fallen off of rocks and <laughs> sticks and stuff. I am the Scoutmaster of Troop 133 at Alpha Street Baptist Church. So what motivated me to be a Scoutmaster? I was a Scout myself uh, growing up in College Park, Georgia, and uh, it really aided in the growth, uh, my growth. 
and I wanted to do the same for young men at Alpha Street. Boy Scouts has taught me that I need to uh, really focus. It really shows me how to focus and lock in with uh, what I'm doing. Like if I uh, if I want to do it, I gotta go get it myself. Girl Scouts has, is just so helpful and you learn so many things and you get to meet so many great people and have events and opportunities like none other. And I think Girl Scouts is just really helpful as a girl and you get to meet other people that can be really inspirational for you. If you were a young boy and you wanted to join the Boy Scouts, I would, I would encourage you, I would definitely say join it because there's no downside to it. In it is fellowship with other, other um, young men your age, other people like you, and in the Troop at 133, other young black men so you can be amongst your tribe um, and kind of develop with them and have a brotherhood. A message that I want to share with all of my scouts, and I, I say this to them often, is, is reach for your, your goals. Whatever your goals might be, your goal might not be Eagle Scout. Your goal, your goal might be to be a first class scout or to just to be a part of the troop and enjoy the brotherhood. Whatever your goal is in life, in scouting, work hard to achieve it. Do your best. is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. not be a sinner I'll tell you the reason why I'm afraid my Lord might call my name and I wouldn't be ready to die no Jesus is a rock in a weary land yes a weary land I know a weary land Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in a time of storm. I would not be a backslider. Let me tell you the reason why. I'm afraid my Lord might call my name, and I wouldn't be ready to die. No.
is a rock and a weary land in the time of storm. Oh, he is the rock of ages in a weary land. He is the shelter in the time of storm. I'm a witness. He's a rock. Jesus is a rock in a weary land in the time of storm. Oh, he is the rock of ages in a weary land. Amen. Where well, I thank you that that is more than just a song, but a true testimony of what you've been to each and every one of us, a shelter in the time of storm. Thank you, O oh God, 
Now we invite you to speak to the very truths of the storms and the struggles of our lives. Speak now, Lord, for your servants are listening. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to hear a word from the Lord as we root it in the book of Isaiah. If you're able to turn to the 36th chapter of the book of Isaiah, it is our custom to ask those who are physically able to stand with us as together we reverence the reading of the Word of God from Isaiah chapter 36. What is written in Isaiah 36, you will find parallel and complementary information in 2 Kings and in 2 Chronicles. Today I hear, ask that you hear the reading of what happens from Isaiah. Chapter 36, beginning in verse number one, I'm reading out of the New International Version. Listen for the word of the Lord. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. Then the king of Assyria sent his field commander with a large army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. When the commander stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the launderer's field, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shebna the secretary and Joah son of Asaph the recorder went out to him. The field commander said to them, tell Hezekiah, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have counsel and might for war, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending that you would rebel against me. Look, I know you're depending on Egypt, that splintered reed of a staff, which pierces the hand of anyone who leans on it. Such is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who depend on him. But if you say to me, we are depending on the Lord our God, isn't he the one whose high places and altars Hezekiah removed, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship before this altar? Come now. Make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses if you can put riders on them. How then can you repulse one officer of the least of my master's officials, even though you're depending on Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Furthermore, have I come to attack and destroy this land without the Lord? The Lord himself told me to march against this country and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to the field commander, Please, speak to your servants in Aramaic, since we understand it. Don't speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people on the wall. But the commander replied, Was it only to your master and you that my master sent me to say these things and not to the people sitting on the wall? Who, like you, will have to eat their own excrement and drink their own urine. Then the commander stood and called out in Hebrew, hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says, do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord. When he says the Lord will surely deliver us and this city will not be given to the hand of the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Hezekiah. This is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me. Then each of you will eat fruit from your own vine and fig tree and drink water from your own cistern until I come and take you to a land of your own, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Do not let Hezekiah mislead you when he says the Lord will deliver us. Have the gods of any nations ever delivered their lands from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sephbaraim? Have they rescued Samaria from my hand? Who of all the gods of these countries have been able to save their lands from me? How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But the people remained silent and said nothing in reply. Because the king had commanded them, do not answer him. 
Oh, I want to talk today about trash talk. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Trash talk. I want to share this openly. I've said it before that I love being part of Alpha Street Baptist Church. These last 15 years have been nothing other than a pure joy to my life. And other than being the father of two amazing young men, nothing in the world brings me as much joy as you all giving me the grace every Sunday to stand here and share with you my convictions about Jesus Christ and then giving me the privilege of walking through the seasons and struggles of your life with you. I love working in this church. But as much joy as it's brought me, I need to let you know that I also have a side job. I took this job not because Alpha Street doesn't take care of me, but literally because there is something I enjoy almost as much as preaching. I love teaching. Not, not, not teaching, preaching. I love teaching people how to play spades. <laughs> I am a professor of spades. I don't play spades, I teach spades. Because if you sit down at a table with me, it's not a game. <laughs> it is a lesson you won't forget anytime soon. <laughs> I believe MC Light was talking about me in 1989 when she wrote Cha Cha Cha, and this is what she said. So don't ever second guess me. And if you're wondering who could the best be, think a second and recollect the worst whipping you ever had yet, and I bet that I did it. My fingerprints are still on you. How many times I got to warn you <laughs> about the light, it'll blind your sight, <laughs> but the rhythm will still guide you through the night. I, I'm good at what I do. <laughs> I've got a degree in spades, and Marcy, it's not simply because I know which card to play. I know the fundamentals. It's not simply because I know how to throw off with a jack to get you to play the ace so my king can walk. It's not simply because I know how to jump and cut high so that I don't bump heads with my partner. It's not even because I know how to renege and not get caught, because it ain't reneging if you don't catch me. <laughs> no, no, what makes me good is that I know how to talk trash. <laughs> Anybody's ever played spades, you know that it's really not about winning books. It's about embarrassing your opponents. It's about getting underneath their skin. It's about intimidating them. It's about me causing you to second guess that possible you think you have in your hand. <laughs> to talk you out of your game and convince you you're going to lose before we even get started. Beloved, beloved, please do, do me a favor after this sermon. Please do not challenge me to spades. <laughs> I hurt people's feelings when I play spades. And I don't want to ruin our relationship as pastor and people. Because if you sit down with me, your feelings will be hurt. Before we play, there's a waiver I need you to sign <laughs> that says you, you volunteered for this. <laughs> that you about to get. When we sit down, I'm, I'm going to pull out my Jack Jenkins from, from Harlem Nights. And I'm going to tell you, D -d 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 don't <laughs> T -t take this p p p p p personal. <laughs> mm. When the cards are dealt, I'm going to bid five books before I even look at my cards on general principle. When I look at my cards, I'm going to take about three or four and set them off to the side and tell you, you can choose any three of these you want when you want them. 
Don't let me have the big joker. I'm going to take that and put it right on my forehead and leave it right there for the entirety of the game. <laughs> you know what I like most? I like it most when you thought you won a book. And now I got to pull out a Vera from Harlem Nights. Now I got to cut you. <laughs> and I'll look at you, I'll tell you what I tell you by sitting at this table with the big boys. I like talking trash. Because, Zell, I found out if I can get in your head, if I can get underneath your skin, if I can get you to second guess yourself, you will help me beat you all by yourself. Talking trash works. Matter of fact, you might be surprised to know that in 2017, an article was published by the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania, one of the top-rated business schools in the nation. And they came out with empirical evidence that talking trash affects competitive behavior. The Wharton School of Business gave a formal definition of trash talk. This is what they defined it as. Boastful comments about the self or insulting remarks about competitors that are delivered by a competitor typically before or during a competition. And they looked at the consequences of people who had been subject to trash talking and found out that if you talk trash to someone, you can intimidate them, you can get them to doubt their self, you can get them to lose their focus, and you can get them to lose before they even begin. Beloved, because anyone who would win has to know how to deal with trash talk. That's not a lesson just about sports and spades. That's a lesson of life. Because when you sit down at this table of life, there is always an enemy, always an opponent who is talking trash in your ear to get you to doubt that you can be what God said you would be, that you can walk in the promises God has made, that you can be all that God created you to be. There is a life lesson by learning to deal with the enemy talking trash. That's part of what happens here in 701 BC. This passage in Isaiah chapter 36 that is also mirrored in 2 Kings 18 and 2 Chronicles chapter 32. When you put them all together, there's a little background you need to know. In 701, when this passage is written, Hezekiah is king of Israel. Hezekiah is the son of Ahaz. Let the church say Ahaz. Ahaz. In case you don't remember your Sunday school lesson, Ahaz is the worst king Israel has ever had. Ahaz has financially manipulated and abused the people. Ahaz made, made bargains with Israel's enemies that personally profited him. A A Ahaz convinced the Supreme Court to turn over legislation that, that opened doors for people in his land. Ahaz had, had indictment after indictment and court case after court case brought about him. Ahaz riled up a group to believe that supremacy was now right again. Ahaz promised to do things Ahaz could not do. Ahaz was the worst president king. <laughs> that Israel's ever seen. And Ahaz led the people away from God. He embraced the worship of false gods. And he had the audacity to build altars to false gods in the middle of the temple in Jerusalem. Y'all, Ahaz was so bad, the Bible says that when he died, the people of God refused to bury him with the other kings of Israel. Ahaz was so ratchet, they wouldn't even bury him with the other kings. When he dies, his son Hezekiah, who's 25 years old, begins to reign. And the good news for Israel 
is that Hezekiah ain't nothing like his daddy. The Bible says Hezekiah was faithful. He was obedient. He was upright. He was good. And he worked for the Lord with all of his heart. Hezekiah was responsible for religious reform in Israel. He purged and purified the temple. He recommissioned the Levites and the priests. He brought back worship to Israel and the celebration of the Passover. And most importantly, Hezekiah tore down all the altars that his father had built. He tries to clean up what his father messed up. And the Bible says that because he was faithful to God, he was favored by God. Let me say that one more again. He was faithful to God, and therefore he was favored by God. The reason I repeated that, someone, you need to write that down. That's a formula that still works. When you're faithful to God, you can be favored by God. Faithful and favor go together. That the more you walk with God, the more you surrender to God, the more you trust God, the more you obey God, the more you yield to God, the more you surrender to God, the more God will favor you in your life. But let me give you a word of warning. Favor attracts enemies. When the favor of God is on you, people will hate you. There is no way for God to elevate you without your enemy targeting you. And if you've ever had opposition, if you've ever had haters, if you've ever had enemy attack against you, it's probably because God has favored you and put you somewhere that somebody else wishes they could stand, wishes they could sit, wishes they could be in that place. But favor will cause a fight. You know what favor is like? Favor is like putting on your favorite perfume or cologne in August to go to an outdoor cookout. Because if you go out in August with cologne on at a cookout, mosquitoes are going to smell your favor and will attack you. When God favors you, a fight is in your future. When God elevates you, enemies will come. That's what happens to Hezekiah. God favors him, and as a result, the Assyrians now target him. The Assyrians, led by a brother named Sennacherib, they come in 701 to Jerusalem to capture and destroy the city. The problem, Deacon Knowles, is that Jerusalem is fortified. It's in a wall. And the enemy cannot get in, so the enemy, the Assyrians, do what they normally do. They lay siege to the city. If you're not familiar with that military term, it simply means that they encircle the city and they cut off the water supply from the streams into the city in hopes that in dehydration and starvation, the people inside the city will surrender the city because the enemy has cut the water off. I want to make sure you catch this. The enemy has attacked, but they can't capture the city, so they cut off the water because they realize if we can't capture it, the only way to take it is for you to give it up. Can I try them again? There's some things the enemy can't take, but you've got to willingly give up in order for you to lose. The, the enemy can't take your faith, but you got to choose not to trust God. The enemy can't steal your joy. You got to choose to be miserable. The enemy can't disrupt your peace. You got to choose to worry. The enemy can't stop your praise. You got to decide you're not going to give God any glory. There's some things the enemy can't take from you. You got to give them up. So the enemy circles the city, 
And Hezekiah found out what I want to tell y'all. Every saint has a Sennacherib. Every child of God has something that will come into your life that will cause you to doubt God. Every saint, no matter how big your Bible is, no matter how many consecutive Sundays you come to church, no matter how many tongues you pray in and talk in, I come by to tell you that your Holy Ghost-filled, fire-baptized self will have something come into your life that causes you to doubt whether God is on your side, causes you to doubt whether the promises of God are real, causes you to doubt whether God will do what God said he would do. Every saint has. Sennacherib. And what's amazing is that Sennacherib doesn't show up. He sends a messenger. In, in, in the Bible, you may hear it, he's called a Rav Shaker. That literally means a cupbearer, an ambassador, an emissary is sent to talk to the people on behalf of Sennacherib. Because Sennacherib is not just a person. Sennacherib can be a message that you hear. It can be a thought that runs across your mind too much. It can be a statistic that you're aware of and you feel you can never overcome. It can be an opinion someone gave of you that then starts to shape who you are. It can be a doubt that keeps creeping up in your mind. It could be an insecurity that is triggered every time you try to do something great. It can be a mistake that follows you everywhere you go. It could be a criticism from someone you love that cut you deeply and you cannot heal from it. It can be a prognosis of something you did not plan to have to go through. It can be a trauma that keeps coming up in your mind and doesn't allow you to sleep at night. It can be the betrayal of someone you trusted and someone you love, but everybody has some thoughts that the enemy tries to plant in your mind as trash talk to make you believe you are not worthy and you cannot be what God called you to be and you cannot achieve and you cannot succeed. There are messages that the enemy tries to speak to our mind. They're right here in the text. Can I share three of them with you? Let me tell you what the enemy will try to tell you. This messenger shows up, and he says to the people, you can't trust in God because, watch this, Hezekiah tore the altars down. The reason you can't trust in God to help you is because y'all tore the altars down. You let him do this. Here's what the enemy is good at telling you, that you can't count on God to help you because you brought this on yourself. Can I tell you what the enemy is good at doing? Making you feel guilty about stuff you've done. Can I tell you what the enemy is good at? The enemy is great at reminding you of every mistake you've ever made. Yeah. Can I tell you what the enemy's good at? The enemy's good at keeping a record of every fault you've had, every sin you've committed, every time you've made a mistake. And every time God opens a new door for you, the enemy will sign an usher at the door with the gift of memory whose assignment ain't nothing other to remind you of what you used to do, what you used to be, who you used to hang with, what you used to do wrong. The enemy as great at making you feel guilty, of making you feel unworthy, of making you tell yourself what you can't be. Can we be honest for a moment? Everybody in here has messed up multiple times. <laughs> you, you, you lying. You're not telling the truth. Um, let me say it again. Everybody in here sins all the time. Everybody in here, the, the only reason you can be quiet is that yours didn't go public. But, but everybody in here has made mistake after mistake, after mistake, after mistake. Matter of fact, you've heard me tell it to you before, the only folk in this church who are above sin are the ones in the balcony. 
because they're sitting above you. <laughs> Everybody in here has messed up. Truth be told, there's some stuff you never should have gone through had you been obedient to God. There's some tears you never should have cried had you listened to what God was telling you. Oh, there's some nights you would have slept better if you'd asked God to lead and guide your footsteps. There's some stuff you never would have dealt with if you prayed more about it before you made the decision. Everybody in here has made multiple mistakes. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren and the sistren. Satan is the accuser. That word accuser in Revelation 12 is this Greek term, kategoreo, which literally means the plaintiff. He's the one that brings you into court and puts you on the defense. He's the one that makes you tell yourself you're not worthy. He's the one that makes you entertain that somehow or another what you did last year will prevent what you want to do next year. He's the one that keeps reminding you of how often you told God you wouldn't do it and you did it anyhow. He's the one that reminds you that you didn't pray the way you should have prayed, that you didn't read your Bible, that you didn't trust God. He's the one that puts that thought in your mind because the end result is now you begin to wonder whether God can be with you. Hear me, here's what the messenger says. Because you did all that, how can you think God will be with you now? As many times as you messed up, as often as you keep failing, you repeatedly are guilty of the same thing and you got the unmitigated goal to think that God is on your side? Well, I'm preaching to somebody today. Um, have you ever gotten yourself in a mess and told yourself, ain't no point in praying about it because I should have prayed before I got in it and now God's going to just have to let me deal with it by myself? Oh, now you. Ha have you ever dug a hole for yourself and convinced yourself you just got to get out of it because God ain't going to help you get out of this because God told you not to get it in the first place? Okay, I told you. Have, have, you ever, have you ever seen a temptation coming your way and you didn't even pray about it because you and God knew You was going to do it anyhow. <laughs> have, have you ever convinced yourself that God was looking down at you <laughs> and just shaking God's head in disgust and disappointment and disdain? Have you ever felt and told yourself God doesn't want to have anything to do with you. God is not in the middle of this. That God's hand is not because you brought it on yourself. That's the trash talk of the enemy. I come by to tell you that God is still with you. How do I know? Watch it. Because when the enemy said Hezekiah tore down the altars, Hezekiah didn't tear down the altar to God. He tore down the altar to the false gods. He was trying to clean up what his dad messed up. He was trying to get Israel back in the right place. He was trying to do the right thing. His heart was in the right place. And here's what I can promise you. That whenever your heart is in the right place, God is with you. Whenever you're trying to do the right thing, God is on your side. Whenever you're trying to clean your life up, God will empower you. Whenever you're trying to walk out of sin, God walks with you. Whenever you're desiring to put God first in your life, God is always on your side. When your heart is in the right place, God is always on your side. God is always with you when you're trying to do right. Can I prove it? Remember I told you this is 701 B.C. Well, 35 years earlier, when Ahaz was king, Ahaz was attacked in the Syro-Ephraimite War. Go on, teach that Bible, Howard John. The Syro-Ephraimite War in 735 was when enemies of Israel came together and attacked Ahaz. And watch this. 
and God protected the city when Ahaz was king. Some of y'all look slow. I'm gonna try it again. Uh, God protected the city when Ahaz was king. You forgot what I just told you about Ahaz. He was the worst king Israel ever had. And I just believe Hezekiah encouraged himself and said, if God would protect the city when evil was on the throne, then surely God will protect us now that we're trying to do the right thing. Somebody, you missed your shout, I'm gonna make it easy. If God cared enough about you while you were in the streets and in sin, if God kept you when you were strung out and low down, if God's hand was on you when you didn't come to church, how much more will God walk with you when you're trying to do the right thing? If if God was with you in your BC, before Christ, <laughs> I wish I had some folk that could be honest. You ain't been saved your whole life. I need some witnesses that know I've got some BC, but God's hand was on me. God kept me from dying. God kept me from going through the worst. And if God was with me then, then surely God is with me now. Don't ever let the enemy make you think God is not with you because you brought it on yourself. That, 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 that's, that's not all the enemy will do. The enemy will not only try to convince you that you brought it on yourself. Let me tell you what else the enemy will try to do. You ready? The enemy will try to make you believe that what happened to other people is going to happen to you. Oh, God. Uh, uh, the enemy tries to persuade you to think that the only outcome is the one you've seen. Watch this, watch this. The messenger's talking trash. He says, you brought this on yourself. And then he begins to recite the resume of Sennacherib. Watch what he says. Joyce says, uh, where's Hamath? Where's Arpad? Where's Sephvaraim? And where's Samaria? Where's Hamath? Where's Arpad? Where's Sephvaraim? Where's Samaria? You know what those are? Those are all cities Sennacherib had already conquered. So watch what the enemy says. We took out Hamath. We beat Arpad. Sephvaraim, done. Samaria wiped out. And then he asked this question. And so what makes you think you are any different than what we just did to them? Here's the enemy talking trash. You see what happened to other folk. That's the only thing that can happen to you. The enemy is good not only at reminding you of your mistakes, but other people's failures and suggesting to you that the only outcome you can have is the same one they did. What makes you think you're different? If they didn't survive, you won't. If their business failed, yours will. If they didn't graduate, you can't. If they didn't get out of it, you're going to stay in it. Can I push it? He starts reminding them of what has happened to the other cities, but if you read the Second Chronicles version in Second Chronicles 32, the trash talk, he also begins talking about Sennacherib's dad and granddad and grandfather. He says not only has Sennacherib won, his daddy won. His grandfather won. His great-grandfather won. Because the enemy is trying to persuade them it's generational. This ain't nothing new. This is generational. Because if he can convince you 
that the outcome is generational, you'll believe it's unavoidable. Go on, preach, Pastor. Preach that thing. Uh, if you think it's generational, you'll think it's inevitable. If you convince yourself that this ain't nothing new, but this has been happening in your family for quite some time, you will convince yourself that's the only outcome you can have. Y'all, it's one thing when you read about it in the newspaper. It's another when you see it in your family. It's one thing when it's a statistic about somebody else. It's another when you saw it in your mama. It's one thing when it affects that group over there. But it's a whole other thing when it's landed in your lap. And here's what the enemy will do. The enemy will convince you that it's generational. That you're going to have the same outcome as your mama. That nobody from your neighborhood has gotten out. Why do you think you are? That no one with your skin color has ever walked through that door. No one with your hair texture and your curves have ever sat in that seat. Nobody that looks like you and has been where you've been and has been what you've had to go through. Nobody like you has ever made it over there. So what makes you think you're any different? This is the only outcome. That's the trash, he talks. Let me tell you what Hezekiah does. Y'all ready to shout? Um, remember I told you they laid siege to the city and they cut the water off? Because that's what they always did, right? The Assyrians did that with Hamath, and it worked. They did it with Arpad, and it worked. They did it with Sepharaim, and it worked. They did it with Samaria, and it worked. The enemy knows how to cut the water off. So watch what Hezekiah does. When Hezekiah senses that Assyria is coming against them, he orders his men to create tunnels under the city that were connected to the water source so that the water could come underneath the city. And even when the enemy thought they cut the water off, they didn't know that Hezekiah had made a tunnel underneath the city for the water to come. Oh, you're about to get it. Uh, Hezekiah says it may have worked against them, but that doesn't mean it has to work against me. I am not Hamath. I am not Arpad. I am not Samaria. I don't know who I came to preach to today. You are not your mama. You are not your grandfather. You are not your cousin. You are not them folk from your neighborhood. You are a child of God, and God has a different destiny for you. Oh. Somebody holler, I'm different. Mm, mm, mm. Can, can I prove it? As Kaya says, just because that worked on other folk don't mean I'm going to give up. As Kaya, you, you remember when I told you about Ahaz, how bad he was? He was so bad that they didn't bury him with the other kings. Matter of fact, nobody knows where Ahaz is buried. He, him gone, him, him gone. When Hezekiah died, you want to know where they buried him? I'm going to see if you guess this. Carla, they buried him right next to King David. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Uh, you almost caught it. Uh, his daddy, gone. Him buried next to David. Ahaz's end was all gone. Hezekiah's end was right next to King David. Because Hezekiah found out that my end does not have to be the same end as my father. That my destiny does not have to be the same as my generations before me. That God can put me in a place nobody in my family's been. Nobody in my neighborhood has been. Nobody in my color has been. God can take you. 
And Hezekiah said something to himself that you ought to say to yourself. Hezekiah said, well, if anybody's going to win, it might as well be me. <laughs> Beloved, that's your homework assignment, to begin telling yourself, it might as well be me. If anybody's going to beat this cancer, it might as well be me. If anybody's going to open up that job, it might as well be me. If anybody's going to walk across that stage, it might as well be me. Is there anybody here that's got enough courage to declare it might as well be me? Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh. Um, let, let me let me compose myself and bring it into this sermon. Uh, I've got to learn to control energy because we're going to have to go back to three services soon. <laughs> uh, uh, sit down. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the enemy will put in your mind that you brought this on yourself so God can't help you. Then he will tell you, you're no different than anyone else. What happened to them is gonna happen to you. And here's the trash talk of the enemy. The enemy will try to convince you that this is too much for you to handle. There's no way you can handle this. Watch, watch, watch the trash talk, it's right here in the Bible. Uh, this brother shows up. And he says, um, why are you so confident? What are you trusting in? And then he takes inventory. And that's what he says. He says, listen, our army is bigger than yours. Um, our weapons are more advanced than yours. Our soldiers are better trained than yours. And when we go to war, army, weapons, and soldiers matter. You ain't got enough to handle this. You don't have enough folk to handle this. You ain't got enough money to handle this. You don't have enough experience to handle this. We've got more soldiers than you. Our weapons are mightier than yours. Our people are more advanced than you. You might as well give up now because you don't have what it takes to fight this battle. And Hezekiah has to come in and tell them what I'm about to tell you. He says, you're right. Our army ain't as big. Our soldiers are not as trained. Our weapons are not as advanced. But your problem is that you think we're going to battle with armies. You think we're going to fight with soldiers. You think our only weapons are the bow and arrow in our hand. And he's got to remind Israel what I remind you, that we've got a God who is on our side. And the God we serve is greater than anything that stands against us. Goodbye, Alpha Street. May the Lord bless you mighty, mighty, mighty good. But I came by to remind someone you've got a God who is bigger than your struggle, bigger than your pain, bigger than your diagnosis, bigger than your battles. And not only is our God bigger, but our God will fight with us. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you serve a God who says, if you stand still and call on my name, I will fight your battle on your behalf. Goodbye, saints. But I need about three witnesses who can say God fought that battle. God made that way. God moved that mountain. God opened that door. God healed that sickness. God restored that relationship. God saved my child. The Lord made a way. Is there anybody here?
that knows God will fight for you. God will make a way for you. Um, 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 he's been talking trash. But Hezekiah says, but we've got a God who fights for us. So watch what they did. I got to go. I got to go. Got to go. Um, Bible says at the end, as Caius said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to call a fast. Because I got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that if we can get on our knees and call out to God, that God will handle this thing for us. Hezekiah knew what I share with you, that if you can pray and you can get down on your knees and you got enough faith to call on God, that we serve a God who hears and answers prayer. We serve a God who listens to the cry of his children. If you can't pray nothing other, then now I lay me down to sleep. That's all it takes for God to get involved in that thing. Okay, y'all look slow. Um, um, I, I told y'all the other Sunday that, that prayer is when you go to God and you say, here. Uh, I, Denzel, I found out that prayer, prayer is something else. Prayer is something else. Because the other day, I, I, I confession, don't judge me. Um, I watched uh, the WWF the other day because The Rock came back. And, and I grew up watching wrestling. I loved the, the old days of wrestling with, with the golden boy Ric Flair and, 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 and whoa! Uh, and the Van Erics with the claw. I, I grew up in that era. And the reason I fell in love with wrestling is because they got a special type of competition called tag team. Um, and, and the way tag team works, is that you're in the ring fighting with your opponent. But there may come a time when the opponent has gotten the best of you. And if you can just get to your corner, and if you can just lift your hand, you can slap five with your partner who will jump in the ring and start to fight for you. Can I tell you what prayer is? When the enemy's got the best of me, and sickness has weighed me down, if I can get on my knees and just call on the Lord, God will jump in the battle and fight for me. Won't he do it? Won't he answer? Won't he show up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hezekiah, they prayed. And God brought them victory. And here's the only problem I have with the victory they had. The Bible says that uh, when the messenger was talking trash, watch this, he starts talking in Hebrew, the language of the people. And uh, Hezekiah's men said, don't talk in Hebrew because the people understand you. The enemy has learned your language and knows how to talk to you. The enemy knows Joyce. <laughs> he knows how to speak Melissa. He knows the language of Denzel. He knows Howard John. He speaks in our language. And the Bible says uh, that, that Hezekiah told the folk, when you hear the trash talk, just be quiet. Don't say nothing else. I got a problem with that. Can I tell you what my problem is? Because if the enemy spoke Hebrew, that means he understood it. So if I talk Hebrew back, you know what I'm saying. I ain't got to be silent. I can talk back. Okay, okay. Uh, I got too much South Side in me. 
to let my opponent talk trash and I don't talk trash back. Can, can I tell you how I got my degree in spades? I was in college at Duke University and uh, one weekend we decided to go over to North Carolina Central. Because uh, the weekends were better at Central. <laughs> and uh, we're hanging out with some of our frat brothers over there, and we start playing spades. And they start talking a whole lot of trash. Uh, they began to talk about how dumb we were because we went to Duke University. They questioned our blackness because I went to a PWI. They suggested that we didn't know how to, they talked and talked and talked. And finally it got underneath my skin. And I decided that if you gonna talk to me, that I know how to talk back to you. If you gonna talk trash, I know how to talk trash. And I learned right then and there that I don't let the enemy talk to me without talking back to him. So the next time the enemy tells you, you brought it on yourself, I want you to talk back. The next time it crosses your mind that God is not with you, I want you to learn to talk back. The next time you think that God has given up on you, I want you to talk back. The next time you think whatever happened to them has got to happen to you, I want you to learn to talk back. All you got to do is say something like this. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All you got to do is say, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. All you got to say is you may have meant it for evil, but God will work it for my good. All you got to do is remind yourself, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? All you got to do is remind yourself that they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Learn to talk trash. And now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I ask, to him be the glory. Learn to talk trash. Uh, if you're able, won't you stand for a minute? Listen, the devil has been lying to you, making you believe that God is not with you, making you think the only outcome you have is the one someone else experienced making you think that it's too much for you to handle. Do me a favor, I don't want you to touch your neighbor, but would you lean over to someone and tell them the devil's lying to you? The devil's lying to you. The devil is lying to you. Because no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, God is calling you. God wants to be active in your life. Jesus wants to reign in your heart. So today, my brother, my sister, I say to you, there's no reason for you not to come. There's no reason for you to say that today God brought me to church to start getting my life back together. That today the Lord is calling me to a new place, a new relationship, a new walk with him. Our deacons are gonna come to the altar and today, if you're under the sound of my voice, in the balcony, in the overflow, in this main sanctuary, and you desire to say yes to that invitation, we invite you to come to Jesus now. Wherever you are, whoever you are, won't you come today? The Lord is calling you, my brother, my sister. There's no reason for you to stay the same today that you were when you came. My sister, my brother, won't you say yes to Jesus? This is an invitation to salvation, to become a member of this church family. 
I want you to say yes, if you will. Come to Jesus now. All you got to do is make the first step. Bless you, my sister. He's waiting with arms wide open. An invitation for you, my sister, for you, my brother, to come and to give your life to the Lord, to finally join the church family. Believe him and receive him. He's calling. Won't you come to Jesus now? Would you come today, sister? Would you come, brother? He's waiting with arms wide open. Yes, you, yes, you. It might as well be you. It might as well be you. Bless you, my sister. Receive him. He's calling. Won't you come to Jesus now? Right now? You may be seated, family. Listen, in this space, if coming forth publicly was not comfortable, or if you're online and it's not possible to walk to this altar, there's still opportunity. At the end of the service, you can fill out on our website our membership form and allow us to reach out to you today. When you leave out of here today, there will be some sisters and brothers in the narthex and at the altar, our deacons, who will gladly welcome you into the body of Christ Jesus. But would you help me thank God for our two sisters today, for their decision, their commitment to come forth publicly. God, we thank you for them, and we ask now that as we put our arms of love around them, that we share with them the amazing grace you offer in Jesus Christ, and support them, O oh God, in their new journey as disciples, as members of this place. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we have been blessed in worship today. Do me a favor. Don't just run out without taking an opportunity to be prayerful and obedient in your giving. Again, we don't lift up an offering, but we do encourage you to obey what the Spirit will put on your heart. We're blessed now by the Trinity in our final selection, and then we leave in the grace and the peace of God. Now to the Almighty and the All-Wise, to the Sovereign and the Eternal, to the Faithful and the Omnipotent God who alone is Creator of heaven and earth, to the God who's made himself perfectly known to us in Jesus, who always and alone is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer, to the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose and person of the Holy Spirit. To that all wise God be both glory and majesty, dominion and power from now until eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and awaited his return said amen.
family, do me a favor if you will. We're there are two group photos we need to take, one with our students from Connecticut and one with our scouts. So if you can avoid the rush to the altar to allow us to coordinate those two large photos, it'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Go in the grace of God and may the grace of God go with you. Attention all men of ASBC, calling all brothers to join us for our April Real Talk session entitled Brother, Where Art Thou? On Wednesday, April 17th from 6.30 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. Eastern. In-person fellowship is at ASBC Building 331 First Floor Conference Room. For this journey of friendship and accountability, our aim is to provide tangible tools and insights to help men use the power of brotherhood to advance their walk with God. Join ASBC's Men's Ministry for continuation of the 2024 series, Thriving Together, as we embark on a year of collective growth and support. Visit our website to register online or email men at alfredstreet.org for more information. Alfred Street, join the Social Justice Ministry on Wednesday, April 17th for a virtual Zoom experience from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, entitled Advocacy and Resistance in the Face of Erasure. We will host a panel discussing the necessity of advocacy and resistance movements in education across the country in the wake of local, municipal, state, and in some instances, federal erasure via legislative policy. Please register your attendance online to receive the Zoom information. Again, just visit our website to register or send an email to socialjustice at alfredstreet.org. Are you looking for a great opportunity to learn a new hobby? Look no further as the ASBC Sports Ministry presents a chess club experience. Effective May 1st, join in the game, happening bi-weekly on Wednesday nights from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This will be an in-person event in the 301 building of Alfred Street in room 221 and 212. Please join us for an opportunity to learn the game of chess and have fellowship. Lessons will be provided to introduce adults 18 years or older to the game of chess and help beginners improve upon their skills. So beginning on May 1st, come learn the difference between a king and a queen piece in the game of chess. For more information or to sign up, visit our website to register online or email chessclub at alfredstreet.org. Are you creative and artistic? If yes, this is the event for you. Join the Alfred Street Baptist Church Faith on Canvas Ministry for an inaugural Meet the Artist series on Saturday, April 20th at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. This is a virtual Zoom experience. We will be in conversation with Mr. Paul Miles, the talented author behind Pastor Wesley's anniversary comic book. You don't want to miss this amazing opportunity. For more information and to receive the Zoom information, please visit our website or send an email to foc at alfredstreet.org. Alfred Street, let's get ready for a mental health break. The Office of Christian Care and Counseling Beauty for Ashes Ministry will host a self-care pep rally on Saturday, April 27th from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. in Building 331, the first floor conference room in the higher ground worship space. The address is 331 South Patrick Street, Alexandria, Virginia. There will be a mime, liturgical dance, singing, and lunch. 
Registration is required. Please visit our website to register or send an email to beautyforashes at alfredstreet.org. Attention all high school seniors of Alfred Street Baptist Church. It's that time of year. The 2024 ASBC High School Senior Scholarship applications are now being accepted online. Calling all parents and guardians of high school seniors to visit our website. Complete the application today. More detailed information can be found on our website. So don't wait. Please complete your application today. Hey everybody, I'm Minister Otis Bird Jr. and it's my honor to serve as the assistant to the pastor for online ministry and engagement here at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. And guess what? I have some exciting news to share with you. I'm glad you asked. It's our new live pre-worship broadcast, The Prelude. I got you. Every Sunday morning, we will go live reporting from inside the walls of ASBC to inform you of what's going on in these Alfred streets, to intentionally engage with our faithful online viewers, and just to have some fun together before worship service begins. It will begin airing on Sunday, February 4th. Online viewers, get ready to interact with us live in the chat. Get ready to share with us your name, your city, and any other comments you'd like to share with us. We are excited about this endeavor and we hope to see you there. Are you looking for an incredible opportunity to share your musical talents? If so, look no further. Alfred Street Sanctified Symphony Orchestra is thrilled to announce that they are recruiting talented musicians like you to join their harmonious family. They're calling for all musicians to join them every Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Send an email to sanctifiedsymphony at alfredstreet.org if interested. They can't wait to welcome you into the Alfred Street Baptist Church Sanctified Symphony Orchestra. Hey, Alfred Street, Versus is back in stock. Our Versus team has been working around the clock to create another batch of our popular Versus Bible-based trivia card game, and they're now available for purchase. That's right, purchase your set of Versus cards today before we sell out again. Visit our website or ASBC app and be the first to get your hands on Versus, a Bible-based trivia game by Alfred Street Baptist Church. Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling, in conjunction with the Health and Well-Being Recovery Ministry, present a bi-weekly peer support session virtually via Zoom. That's every first and third Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit our website for the Zoom link information. The Recovery Ministry peer support sessions will provide a safe and confidential environment to confront addictions, compulsive behaviors, and issues that interfere with a renewed relationship with God. Email recovery at alfredstreet.org for details. Calling all parents and guardians of children, youth, and teens. Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministries are back. We're currently accepting registrations for Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground. Visit our website to register your child or youth today. Alfred Street invites everyone to join the Joyce K. Peterson Handbell Ringers. They are thrilled to announce that their ensemble recruitment is now open. If you have a passion for music and a heart for worship, we invite you to be a part of this harmonious journey. If you can read music and are eager to contribute your talents to a musical ministry that touches souls, this is your moment to shine. For more info and to express your interest, please email handbell at alfredstreet.org. Our Faith Savage Gun tutorial ministry has a new home online. Communicate, learn, and stay informed all in one place. Visit our new webpage and check us out today at alfredstreet.org. Email tutorial at alfredstreet.org for details. Our ASBC Village study guide is now available on the website to download. Be sure to check out a copy if you want to go deeper with Pastor Wesley's sermon prepared for you by the Villages of Alfred Street team. The guide is available online at alfredstreet.org. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number, 571-977-4525. That's 
4525. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward Weekly Radio broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. We want to thank you for tuning into Alpha Street's live worship experience. Again, this is Charnel King, Social Media Manager. For more information on what's happening here at Alpha Street, make sure to check out our website and social media platforms. We hope you have a blessed week. Greetings, family and friends. It is Scout Sunday. Welcome to the Alpha Tree Baptist Church Worship Experience. Thank you for joining us as we honor and celebrate our Boy and Girl Scouts ministries. We welcome you every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern Time, in person and live stream online via our website and social media platforms. Now, here are the upcoming announcements. We know that these are difficult and challenging times. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our online worship services and remain faithful in your giving online via our Alfred Street website, ASBC app, and on.